What's up YouTube? It's Coach Cory. There you saw the new app icon. Here's the new loading screen plus the new music and today we're going over everything else that is coming in this mini update for Brawl Stars. Of course everything you want to know about the new Brawler Colette which you see right here. Also a bunch of new maps. We got a bunch of new skins with crazy animations and more improvements. Let's start out with the skins because there are some crazy ones and some cool animations. What about Super Fan M's? It's gonna come in store for 150 gems. And here she is in the new and improved training cave which is now of course called Star Park. Now this skin, I mean look, it's 150 gems so it's got a lot of quality, right? First off, look at this attack animation. You can see balloons coming out different color. Hairspray looks pretty sweet. And then, even more balloons. Super fan elms love balloons, I guess. But her gadget also has a small a difference in animation as well. So she's got a lot of stuff coming with this. A lot of features with this skin. What about the losing animation? Don't ban me super sub, but I gotta get the losing animation, okay? Okay? Here it is. Also, you can see the new UI screen as well. So another improvement. This is different for every single time you got this improved UI. And of course, there's losing animation for this skin. Next up, Sugar Rush Sandy. This skin is going to be 80 gems. And here's a little uh, 360 view of it. Of course, his lollipop is huge. I mean, he's basically like a wannabe Leon with Rosa. And I mean, I don't... I don't, I don't know. I mean, he's playing to the kid stereotype that he is. But anyways, here's the skin and its animation. So you can see it does have a bit of a different attack animation. Kind of looks like El Primo heads, I think. I mean, they're like weird shaped El Primo heads, but here's the super, you throw it down and it does actually look pretty different. They're like clouds that are El Primo heads, I guess. Kind of weird, but all right. And now for the best 30 gem skin mask spike. And yes, it does change for the most part. Uh, wait, I have to go like this. And it will randomly change. There's actually eight different masks that he can wear. It's not for every single brawler. It's only for eight of them. But it's still kind of cool, in my opinion. At least for 30 gems, I think this is a really cool skin. But I will say it looks best when you're not in a match. Because, look, when you're in a match... It's, like, can you tell? It's, I mean, you can technically tell, but not really. Now, if you're facing this way, you can tell a little bit more. But, again, it's not a very cool skin in a match, but it is a cool skin outside of a match. But, hey, that's why it's 30 gems. Now, the next skin is really cool, and you'll notice something else. Sprout actually has a different animation here. Uh, they've improved some of the animations here. Sprout is one of them, and it does look kind of cool. But Lunar Sprout, this is a dope skin, costs 150 gems. And look at this, going around, it's honestly like Rabbit Lunar Sprout. I don't know why they went the rabbit direction, but it's definitely rabbit. Alright, now here he is in a game. You can tell he throws like Lunar Carrots, I guess. Carrots in Lunar something and then he has like meteorite so to speak with satellites and you know i don't know exactly how to describe it it does look kind of cool and it is very different and here is the losing screen for lunar sprout uh pretty similar kind of he spins around a lot but wait there's more what about el atomico primo which is going to cost 10,000 star points so this one, you don't gotta spend any gems on, and it does actually have some animation, so it's pretty cool as well. Just like a lot of the other 10,000 star point uh, skins. This one, kind of like Captain Carl, when you walk around, uh, he leaves a little trail. In this case, it's kind of like atomic radiation, I guess. When he attacks, it looks mostly the same, but you can actually tell there's like some puff clouds, uh, which is kind of different. And then, uh, when he supers here, it's pretty much the same. He might actually glow now that I think about it, um, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. And of course on the Brawl Pass there is Poco Star, uh, the first skin you get on the Brawl Pass once you buy it. This skin does not have any, uh, well, actually no, it does technically kind of like some other like really cheap skins. It has a super small attack animation where basically it adds stars. You might be able to tell here when I'm not attacking something, there's like kind of some stars mixed in 
throughout his main attack. It's not very noticeable, uh, and his super actually has pretty much the same thing, where there are a couple stars dispersed throughout it to make it more shiny, but it's honestly not much. But hey, the skin is uh, pretty clean. By the way, the other brawler that had an animation change was actually Jessie. You'll notice in her eyes, there's some shine when she's looking at, oh, wait, what is she looking at when she shines here? I don't even know. She just shines and then she sort of looks like she's crying, kind of. And it'll actually show up on the losing screen too, um, which the crying thing makes more sense there. I mean, I assume that's like crying. I don't know, it doesn't actually happen on that skin. But on every other skin, Jessie has that. Now we're about to go over Colette and everything you want to know about her, plus her skin. But you can see here, this is the new friendly battle page. And this is where you can turn bots on and off. If you want to have that 1v1, go right ahead and guess what? There's actually a map in game they put in for that reason exactly. Purple Paradise, uh, where there's basically nothing there. I mean, it's not going to ever show up in ladder, but it is a friendly battle. Basically, if you ever want to have that 1v1, now you got a map for it. Oh, and I'll go over the rest of the maps, every single map that's being added and removed in a little bit after collect. All right, now let's go over everything you're going to want to know about the new Brawler Colette and, of course, her new skin as well, which, you know what, I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Trixie Colette, it looks pretty cool. We'll use this in Training Cave when I show you her attack here. I actually haven't seen it, so let's see what that looks like. But first of all, the main thing to know about her, right? Her attack is very unique. Whenever you attack someone with Colette, she will do 35% of whatever health they have at that moment. And only at that moment. And it's just at their current health, not their max health. That's her main attack. But... Her super is different. Her super, when it hits someone, it does 20% of their maximum health as damage. Not their current health, like her main attack. Now, we're going to go into some stuff about Colette and how I think they should change her because she's going to need some changes. You also notice her health is pretty below average, kind of low, but not extremely low. Um, and you know what? Let's go ahead and take her and turn her cape. Actually, here, I'll show you her gadget star power first. Her gadget allows her, basically, this is supposed to be her kill shot because she can only do, uh, her main attack only damages people based on their current health, right? So if they have a thousand health, she's only gonna do 35% of that. It's gonna be incredibly low. Now, technically her maximum, or her minimum damage is like 240 or I forget, I don't know, 80, but you'll see in a moment here. And I'm just assuming you kind of read this, but if you're waiting on me, yes, her, her when you press her gadget, her next attack will do 40% of her current health as max damage. So one thing you'll notice is yes, if you're low health, this is completely useless. But then again, her normal attack's pretty useless in a lot of ways too. Anyways, her super slash actually her star power, which affects her super. Basically, whenever she supers someone, it will drag them with her to the end. But actually, this is the only star power in the game that makes her worse. <laughs> and I'll explain why in training kit. Alright, so here we go. Using Trixie Colette. Now, first of all, Oh man, she is such a bad brawler. Okay, definitely the worst brawler I think to come in the game. All right, so our, our, this is her attack. She kind of cool. Her range, uh, you will notice. I'll show a little comparison here right now. Okay, her range is the exact same as Colt's. Okay, fine, that's pretty simple, right? But what about our super? The range of her super, what, what? Oh, also pretty much the exact same as Colt. Well, there's no way her reload speed could be the same as Colt too, right? Right? Okay, well, it's actually not, but it is very close. So if you're looking for a comparison to Colette, as far as reload speed range, it's pretty much cold. All right, back to Training Cave here, because this is what you want to see. Now, here's how our main attack works, right? Okay, first off, look how many hits it takes to kill this 4,000 health robot, right? Okay, 1,400 damage. That's fine. That's, that's not horrible. All of a sudden, now it's 900, which easily puts her as the worst pretty much in the game. Pretty close. Oh, 590! Alright, we're three hits in. Okay, four hits. Okay, five. Six. That's right, seven hits to kill someone with 4,000 health. 4,000! Which is easily, insanely low. Okay, well, what about her, her, her super, right? I don't know. Why was it glitching like that? It was sh What the heck? Alright, anyways, we just found a glitch. But, now look, also, I want to show you her, her, um, star power some too. Okay. So you can see it sort of carried, uh, them with her, and, you know, it did, it did 800 damage once, 800 damage twice. Now, why did I say her star power actually makes her super worse? 
because in that time it actually worked fine but sometimes when with this it actually makes it so she carries them along with her uh, i don't know i guess i'm not able to repro reproduce it well i was able to do it some against bots but it makes it so she only gets one hit instead of two sometimes so that's why her star power is not always that great i'm getting two every time now but i will i will say one thing uh, interactions in training caves so Star Park are actually different than in a live game. So this might be why I'm having some differences. I don't know. By the way, maybe you're wondering about her gadget, right? Well, is that the way to solve her damage problems? Um, okay, I did 1,800 damage. That's not bad, right? But I'm full health. The problem with Colette... Well, look here. Let's show some gameplay. Let's put her in a tier for remote, and I'll talk about how bad she is and how we can fix her. All right, so Colette, what tier is she? This is the easiest tier list I have, will ever make, uh, because she's pretty much F tiered every single mode. Or not exactly, but pretty freaking close. Maybe gem grab, she's a little bit better, like C tier? Maybe? But, I mean, really, the problem with Colette is she just cannot, cannot get kills. She can't get kills, and overall, even when she's not getting kills, she's not doing much damage. And for a brawler who's supposed to do a lot of damage but not get kills which i think is sort of my interpretation of her because she has literally no utility whatsoever um none doesn't help teammates uh doesn't make them faster stronger doesn't help you provide objectives isn't good versus objectives she's also horrible versus any turrets her her damage um is also equally horrible versus turrets it's she's horrible versus spawners they're her worst nightmare mr p completely makes her useless every single game um as long as mr p has a turret maybe he, maybe he doesn't have a revolving door but honestly even then she still can't kill a porter so like just quit like literally she can't it takes way too many hits to kill porter um she's just awful in every single game mode she's really bad what about her super right that's the most usable part about her i think is her super um but even then she's still vulnerable during her super she doesn't have a shield at all so just like a normal bull super you can predict sort of where it's going if you're auto aiming honestly it's still really easy to hit her there's a lot of weaknesses about her well okay maybe you're thinking okay well the best part about her is she's supposed to be good versus tanks right she can do a ton of damage when they're high health of course only when they're high health right if all of a sudden that tank is half health which might still have more health than you, uh, she will all of a sudden really be not doing much damage. I mean, there's just like so many ways. It's just like she has no finishing blow and she has no utility. So, I mean, she's just awful in pretty much every single regard. So, and let me tell you, um, here is a big thing you need to note about Clay. One, myself and a lot of other YouTubers have provided Supercell with this feedback that she is awful and she needs some changes. Um, so my guess is all the stuff we're telling you right now, it will not 100% be true when it comes in live because they will probably buff her. Now here's how I think they should buff her and what we've a lot of us have told her. A lot of us have said, okay, making her attack based on the current health of a brawler is just way too difficult to be usable because not only does it change depending on the brawl you're facing, but also the health they're at. And no brawler ever stays at a constant state of health unless they're just AFK camping in the bush, at which point you'll never see them anyways, right? So who cares? So, so overall, it's just kind of too confusing really knowing ever how much damage you're ever gonna do in a fight. So a lot of us have suggested to change her attack from doing damage based on their current health to just make it max health because then it still changes for every single brawler you know let's have the exact same health but it still changes for most brawlers so it's still not an easy thing it's still unique it's still complex but then it's just a fixed value so even if it's like 20 percent of their current health right okay five hits to kill a frank you know that's not amazing even still but that's pretty good that's okay right that's not bad five hits to kill a tick that's really bad but you now know you know exactly how much damage you're doing every single time so that's a lot of our suggestion make it based on um their maximum health instead of their current health she really needs some buffs you can even buff her super you can buff her star power you can buff her gadget i mean you can buff pretty much everything about her except her range i think that's okay uh but that's about it oh and just one other point about her um because i think this is really funny <laughs> So if you have her star power, you know, I was saying it was kind of a negative addition. Here's another way it's sort of a negative, is with that star power, her super now pushes enemies outside of her attack range. 
I mean, unless you hit a wall and then you can't go, you know, further. But like, what? <laughs> Pushes people out of range to attack them. Oh god, like, there's just, oh, she really needs some buffs. Alright, so here are all the new uh, maps that we're gonna have in Brawl Stars. A lot of these are old maps that are being brought back. Now, one difference you'll see is Brawl Stars will now be on a seven-day rotation uh, for uh, in-game. So now, basically, there's only seven maps for every single game mode that's gonna appear. So basically, every map will appear more often is the gist of it. Alright, so here you go, Hard Rock Mine which everyone's familiar with, right? Crystal Arcade, you should be familiar with that. Merch Forge is a different name for Stone Fort. Uh, they basically slightly changed the name if it has a different environment. Honestly, kind of annoying, but makes sense. Undermine, Double Swoosh, Minecart Madness, Fun Map, Snake Shop, just renamed. Uh, old Map that's brought back. Uh, Skull Creeks, I forget, is that staying in the game? I think that was removed for a short period. Sword Stones, coming back. Rockwell Bro, one of my favorite showdown maps. Coming back. Feaster Fame is staying in game. Double Trouble, an old map from Showdown. Coming back. I have mixed feelings about that map, but okay. Stormy Plains. All right. Backwards Cavern Churn. Okay. 2,000 likes. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Kaboom Cavern. Uh, it's an okay map. Safe Zone. I don't like Safe Zone anymore. GG Mortuary, which um, is going to easily be the worst map in the game. It's unquestionable, I think. Um, which used to be called... What was it? GG Corral, that's what it was. This map is too many choke points. Now, the one thing I'll say, this map that maybe will make it improve from when it was in-game last time, is there's now a lot more gadgets and other things that allow you to jump over walls. So maybe it won't be as bad as I think, but dude, that map at high levels is just like choke point and it's just the most defensive game ever. I hate it, but I, I like offense, so maybe that's why. Snake Price in-game, Bounty! is a pretty different map, a lot of long range stuff. So tanks, there used to be a lot of maps in Bounty that suited tanks, not anymore. Um, they are like, yeah, that was not the greatest idea. So they're going away from it. You'll recognize pretty much all these maps. They're all old maps here uh, coming back in. Although this is a different one, but this one will not appear in game, uh, only in friendly battle. Uh, a lot of different uh, Brawl Ball maps, but they're all pretty much old ones that are coming back. Um, so that's not too bad here. Center stage, sunny soccer, field goal, and then siege is the same and hot zone is the same. Well, that is going to be it for this video, but I really do hope you enjoyed and thank you so much for watching. Really. And I hope everyone is uh, doing well and having a fantastic day. Well, I'll catch you later. Peace.